<laughs> Realize what you're gonna bring down on us. So we want to talk about the historical and cinematic elements of The Mandalorian, the new Star Wars Disney Plus show. Hi, Asi. Hi, everybody. You are our cinematic Goth Academy uh, collaborator. And we want to break down The Mandalorian, look at the Western elements, the music, the lone gunman, bounty hunter, the strong silent type that uh, does the good thing even in the face of great odds. Star Wars has always had Western scenes in it in terms of stylistic scenes. Okay. From the New Hope, like uh, Lucas look, he thought of for his like saga, space saga, mm -hmm. opera. Okay. He thought about uh, stylistically uh, some uh, movies like Sergio Leone's uh, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly was already there, like okay. spaghetti films. For example? And the way you, he shots and the way it's this big space. Uninhabited yeah, space. Yeah, the small humans inside this big space and stylistically that uh, translated into extreme wide shots. And then cutting this into extreme close-ups, these kind of like extremes and to show like the extreme situation between the individual and nature or individual and society. And this is the same thing that we see in Star Wars in terms of stylistically when you see the big space, you know, like this big giant space and then this tiny spaceship. He just took space as like the, the West, like the... And Han Solo is like a space cowboy. So he took this as an element, as a stylistic element, and he told a different story out of it. Like the story is more um, related to something else, like uh, the hero, yeah. yeah, the hero journey and everything like that, which is not what uh, Westerns like characters are. Okay, but here and in the here, Mandalorian, yeah, the Mandalorian, it's actually uh, he the took the itself. character itself and the scene itself relates in a way to the classical and also the neo uh, Westerns and uh, spaghetti Westerns and all these kind of uh, in this genre in itself. The entire genre of Westerns is very interesting because it, takes pl it, it depicts a very specific place and a very specific time when Americans began going out west. Uh, the vacuum of power it was like a lawless region. It didn't have uh, like a large empire or, or, or nation controlling uh, this place. And this is very much uh, played out in The Mandalorian. We are, we are in between the empire after the empire crumbled, before the First Order rose. And also, when I was watching it, it uh, also reminded me a lot of uh, samurai movies. And samurais, and also the time when you had samurais who lost their master or the benefactors and became roaming samurais, ronin who went out on their own, who did, were, were, were bounty hunt, hunters. And it, that, that was also in between when you had like a vacuum of power in between strong dynasties. Yes. Yes, it's true that the, uh, this, the Western is like, uh, it's connected to a specific time, but uh, that's actually what makes it most really interesting as a genre. Most genres that we see in film are connected to a feeling and specific kind of tone. So we have horror films, yeah, so it's like films that make you uh, scare you. Yeah. It can be in the future, in the past, doesn't matter. Yeah, dramas and uh, romantic, so it's always about something that, how, how the audience, what kind of feelings and what kind of... Uh, and then you have like the Western, which it, on the surface it looks like it's supposed to be a specific time and place. But uh, if you look at the Westerns and you see what calls them together thematically, so the character is about, it's always about the individual against society. There's no social kind of structures yet and you have to build a new social structure and a new law, right, and a new order. What happens is that the character, the Western character, the classical Western character, comes to this place and there's no law and there's a lot of bad things happening. Yeah. And for the character, he tries to help the good guys. He's actually doing very, very, very violent stuff and very violent and very bad things. And then like, this character cannot stay in this society. It's a tragic character. Right, and that's uh, maybe the universal appeal of the Western that broke away from just the US into the entire world because what do we have to do with the frontier 
of yeah. the of North America. But we, but everybody has this idea of the individual against uh, the law, right? Against the society. Yeah. This is something uh, global. Yeah, universal. Yeah, universal. So um, Japanese took this Western style and they made the samurai style. This is actually how they took it out and then. Actually, the Japanese, like specifically, have a very long history of a relationship with Hollywood that they take genres and they make something new, and then this comes back to Hollywood. It's like mm -hmm. back and forth. And it's not only in Hollywood, they have a tradition of taking good stuff, yeah. perfecting them, making also, them their weapons, own. making them their own, and then exporting them back. Religious, more, like, culture, uh, yeah. China, like they took Chinese culture, made it their own, boom. Yeah, even the, you know, what we see is anima, uh, anima, yeah. uh, manga today. This is like, uh, actually, if you think about it, if you look at the history, this is taking what they saw from Hollywood, like Walt Disney uh, films, and making them their own with what they have, with the culture that they have. Yeah. And the culture is so different, and then it comes back to, to America, it's like something totally so weird, so weird and different, yeah, and, yeah, and now yeah. they're taking it and, uh, and, yeah, yeah. and consuming that. Yeah. It's very interesting. And, and also you know, the Japanese, it, I, I guess it's also uh, Westerners caught on in Japan because uh, their society uh, is in many ways uh, oppressive in the code of the conduct that mm. it demands of, yeah. uh, of the Japanese. And here he speaks, the Mandalorian, Mando, speaks all the time about the code. The Empire is no longer. When one chooses to walk the way of the Mandalore, you are both hunter and prey. There's a code, there's a way. Yeah, that's very interesting. Which way. is like Bushido, like the way of the warrior. Have you ever removed your helmet? No. Has it ever been removed by others? Never. This is the way. Or uh, the code of the knights. You have to do, you have to, this is how you have to behave. And he's like the lone knight, also dressed, you know, like a knight with uh, armor. But then in the 60s and 70s, um, the European took this genre, this Western, and they made it their own. Like the spaghetti Western is actually the European, the European kind of like take on the Western. And they took the Western and they said, okay, we're keeping this timeline, right? It is the American West. They're contradicting the, the Western itself. They're looking at these Westerns and they're saying, this is black and white and we don't want the original to. western yeah we don't have like the good guys are the good guys and the bad guys are the bad guys there's no gray areas and not like yeah. so surgery we on it the good the bad and the ugly so the good is not good the bad is not totally bad and the ugly it's like we're just commenting on this yeah. the way they look the way you shot it the way it's shot it's like taking it and taking it to extremes they're not clean cut and they're not like hollywood kind everybody's hollywood kind of actors they're just showing you it's more reality it's more rough and it's more um, it's just has more life to it in a way. I guess uh, also it has to do with uh, with uh, with the times that when the Americans were after the Second World War, course, we are the good course. guys. We're such good guys, and the Europeans were like, okay, some of us were good guys, some of us were bad guys. This it's hard to tell who's who. No, it's already commentary about the Vietnam War. It's in our disillusion, right? So now the society is not good, you know, because you have Watergate and you have Vietnam and you have all these like conspiracies now coming back. So now it's not about it's not as clean cut as you know you have to come back to society and make yourself a, a good person again right you need to the society itself is bad something is rotten in uh, in Denmark <laughs> so now you take it to space it's very interesting because here we have all kind of codes and laws which are which are not what our Western kind of uh, so here you have the Mandalorian law which is great I mean it says if I understand correctly that the law is right we have to fight the fight is like a, almost a religious kind of uh, aspect to it. So we have all these kind of laws and he is like a Western character. So he's trying to fit into these kind of structures, right? And to do the right thing. And by doing the right thing, it's kind of like, it, for example, it exiles him from the guild, right? Because he has broken the guild as well. Yeah. But the Mandalorians, the other Mandalorians, they help him. Exactly. So he, ha so so he hasn't has broken the Mandalorians. Like a, yeah. so several of laws here. So it's like, it's, it's like nice to take the Western kind of themes and put them in a very different kind of situation. This I really like because it takes something new. It gives something new on these themes and on this kind of genre. Yeah. I don't like when they do like another episode where it's like it's a Western. It's just taking the uh, traditional Western and putting it in space. That for me is much less interesting. 
There was another thing, but I don't know if it's intentional. So the Western, as we know it from the movies and the shows, it's basically the myth of the Western. If you go back and look at history, it wasn't as violent, wasn't as heroic. It was, if you look at what was written in the papers at the time, barely any murders, mostly about new businesses and, uh, and stuff like that. So it wasn't uh, as glamorous. Uh, as, it, uh, as it is portrayed in the, in the movies, and it was more uh, Hispanic and brown than just like blonde people and white people. And I don't know if this is intentional, but here the, the, the cowboy, it's Pedro Pascal, who is uh, American Chilean, but we know that it's Pedro Pascal. So <laughs> okay, here the, okay, hero, the hero is finally a Hispanic person. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but you can say, ah, okay, maybe this is another commentary on the Western when now, the head, the head cowboy is Hispanic. And here the but Native Americans in the fourth episode, they are the victims and the heroes. The, the actress yes, uh, in the fourth yeah. episode, she's a Native American. The thing that really interests me in the series, um, the thing which is like kind of a miracle to me, putting so much money into this uh, <laughs> five hours, and then you have the protagonist being presumably all, the, all along the five hours inside a mask and you don't see his face. This is like, wow, I, I say like, that's crazy in terms of like how uh, ambitious that is in terms of just taking yeah. risks. Right, how can you relate to a person where you exactly. don't see his face? Yeah, you don't exactly. see his face. Exactly, and this shows the power of uh, film cinema. There was a great uh, experiment done in the 1920s showing that if you see, uh, you show a person which has no emotion at all and then you just to position it, like showing it against another image, for example, of food or a woman, we interpret these emotions and we, we put it to this character. Let's take the middle piece of film away, the woman with the child, but leave his two pieces of film as they were. Now we'll put in a girl in a bikini. He looks, girl in a bikini, he smiles. What is he now? The dirty old man. That's what film can do for you. So once you saw like this blank face and then some food, you would say this guy is hungry. And once you see like this man and then a funeral, you would say this guy is sad. And people like look at this and they said, wow, and not only that they said that he looks sad or he looks uh, hungry, they said his portrayal of hunger and of is very good. <laughs> so okay. you don't see like any kind of emotion in this mask. Okay. So it's very, I think, intentional in a way that you can put on this mask whatever emotion you want. And then if you just position this with another image, we see him come and he sees this cradle from the, be the beautiful little baby Yoda. Oh, it's cradle. the first time that we talk about the baby <laughs> yeah, Yoda. Yeah, yeah, not even, <laughs> <laughs> no, let's not, let's not put him into it. He sees the cradle, the broken cradle, and then we cut back to his face. And we as an audience feel his emotion, like his regret, his, his, like his, all his, these emotions and his yeah. sadness and everything. Yeah. And he put it on this mask. It's blank a, mask. This blank mask. It's so funny. I think this mask needs to get an Oscar. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> but it shows us, like, you know, it shows us the power of cinema. Like, and this was shown already in the 1920s and taken by how we can connect to something only through the, the cinema language and not through yeah. the performance, right? Yeah. So, uh, it's yeah. very brave of Pedro Pascal to take this part where you don't I, see his I face. Think, I think the mask should get an Oscar. It's true. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm sure we're going to go see his face in the end. That's, of course, uh, one of the... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, tell us what you think about <laughs> The Mandalorian. And uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And thank you, patrons, for supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel, go to patreon.com slash Academy. I see that the battery is going <laughs> to... Yes. ...going to be dead in a second. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you all next time. Ciao. Bye, everybody. Bye. Wow. That was a great video. Great video. Wow. I really feel like you want to share this video with your friends, right, on your social media platform. I can sense that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better do that. You'll feel better.